Hello, today I'll be looking at a lens that I frankly can't find in much information about. This brand is Woco, which hopefully you can see that in the camera up there. And all I could find about this is that the, the name Woco possibly stands for Wallensock Optical Company. Wallensock Optical Company was one of the finest large format lens and shutter manufacturers in the early 20th century. It was started in Rochester, New York in 1899 and produced their first lenses in 1905. The company continued until 1974 when they were bought out by some other company, but I didn't find out who bought them out. But that probably isn't what this is. If you look up Wallensock Optical Company, you'll find that they mostly made the large format box cameras with the, the bellows, like one of these. I can't find anything about them making lenses for uh, SLR cameras, but doesn't mean they didn't, I just can't find anything about them. I wasn't able to find anything on eBay either. There were no Woco lenses for sale. There were a few of the Wallensock Optical Company cameras for sale, but I couldn't find any of these lenses. So I don't even know how much they would run for these days. And I really don't know if they were, if there's any around. They might be rare for all I know. On to the physical characteristics. It has an M42 thread mount and like all of these older lenses, just go out to B&H Photo or Amazon and pick up a, an adapter for whatever camera body you have. It just screws on like that. An important feature of an M42 adapter is to look for one that has a set screw on it. What this allows you to do is once the lens is mounted on the adapter or the adapter is mounted on the lens, you undo the set screws and turn the lens, put the, put the adapter on your camera body, and then turn the lens so that the numbers that you need to be able to see on the top are on the top. Otherwise, they might be on the bottom. It's just because of the way the threads are. This is a 135 millimeter prime lens, and the focus ring goes for a little bit more than half a turn. Uh, it's maybe 200 degrees. The the grip here is a kind of hard plastic. It's not metal, uh, but it has a good feel to it and it, good texture to allow you to grip it. The ring itself is rather stiff though, which means if this is mounted to your camera body and you're trying to focus, well, I'm just unscrewing the lens from the camera. I have to actually hold on to the lens to, that's, that's really stiff. The aperture has six blades and it goes from f2.8 to f22 in full stop increments. A lot of these lenses that I've reviewed had half stop increments. This is full stop. And there are threads on the front for a 55 millimeter filter. Onto the charts. Here's the focus chart at f2.5. We can see that the center is fairly sharp and there's no chromatic aberration here. If we go to the corners, the upper left is upside down, so I'll look at the upper right. And it's impressively sharp at f2.8. There's a bit of chromatic aberration, but there's not much loss of contrast. At f8, zoom in on the center, and we'll see that it's decently sharp, and there's no chromatic aberration. The corner, there is some chromatic aberration, but it's still pretty sharp, and there's not much loss of contrast. Onto the distortion chart. There's no distortion here, really. There's a little bit at the bottom, but that's likely due to the fact that the mat is no longer laying flat and I didn't get it taped down very well, so it's maybe poofing up a little bit at the bottom. Onto the sample photos. These are the same subjects I took photos of for last week's video. This buffalo statue in the park at f2.8 is nice and sharp, and you can see the texture in the statue. Zooming back out, notice the out-of-focus trees in the background. Compare that to F8, where the trees are more in focus. Here's the smoke signal statue at F2.8. The focus is okay. It's not really sharp, but that's possibly just due to operator error. This is a manual focus lens, after all. 
The sky seems rather dark at f2.8. I'm not sure why that is. At f8, the sky seems better. The focus is more forgiving at f8 as well, so both the face and the sign at the bottom of the statue are in focus. In conclusion, it's not bad for a lens that I can't find anything about. I couldn't even find it on eBay, so I don't know how much they cost. If there's any of them out there to buy, I don't know, maybe this is a rare lens. If you know anything about these lenses, leave a comment. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and ring the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. I have to actually hold on to the lens to... That's, that's really stiff. That's what she said.